asymmetrical cross-examination is a realization that in winning cross, in modern cross, we may ignore things said on direct. That there may be things in the direct we just don't care about. Or more to the point, there may be things left out of direct where we say, well, let's talk about some other things you found at the scene. Let's talk about some other exams. Asymmetrical cross says, just because they talked about A, B, and C doesn't mean I'm crossing on A, B, and C. I may cross on one of those because I've got a cross. But you left out D, E, and F. They're not a complete fit, but they're not required to say, well, what about objection beyond the scope? It's misunderstood. It's for redirect and recross. You cannot shield the detective and say, and did you search the scene? Yes. I want to talk about one thing you found, just this. Objection, Your Honor, they can't go into anything else. No, no. Look, try this. Try putting your client on the stand. Did you kill that man? No. No further questions. And they say, where were you that night? Oh, objection. <laughs> Beyond the scope. I didn't ask where he was. Try it, right? <laughs> to win the case, focus the case on the issues you can win. Find the things you love. And, and there's a wonderful lawyer in San Francisco, Tony Serra. Tony Serra, you should read about him. Tony Serra took a vow of poverty sincere vow of poverty. He's a private lawyer. He keeps none of the money. He exists barely. And he is, he is just a fabulous lawyer. And Tony says, find a fact about which you can feel righteous and build a cathedral around it. Find the facts you love and make them important. Try those issues. Try how far the bathroom is from the living room. Try, how about this? If we're going to get into that, if we can get the child to say at some point, or the adult, if we can get them to say they yelled, they screamed, they fought, now it becomes interesting to hire an acoustics expert or to go door to door in the apartment and go to the door, the apartment up and the apartment down. And now we're calling people and they say, I have no idea who you are. I have no idea why you're here. You're asking me if I was home that night. I was. Did I hear any yelling? No. Great. And you don't know me and you don't care about me, but great. I'm putting you on the stand. You see, what we, we're saying is, what is the part of the case we want to try? It's the part we can win. Asymmetrical cross focuses jurors on the issues you select as opposed to the issues the prosecutor selects. It ignores things we can't win. It redefines what the case is about because remember, jurors measure importance by the amount of time a lawyer spends on it. So how are we going to chart multiple statements? What we got to do, it's, it's really easier. What we do is when a witness has made multiple statements, identify the witness that is most important, almost always the complaining witness. Next, divide that person's story, the story that matters, into a chronological sequence of events. It's not like, where were you at the party? Then you went to the park, then you woke up. It's, it's every little detail, every fact becomes its own event. And we create a draft chapter for each event, even though we don't know if it's going to be any good yet. We are separating out the event into segments, into little individual things. We move the segment of the witness's statement into that draft title. So in other words, your first drink was at 10 p.m. The first drink is an event. What is her statement about drinking at 10? Start, start with, not in cron order, start with the statement that's the longest statement of the witness. Make your baseline the longest statement because the longest statement may have been to a detective a month later, 
but it has more detail. So we're going to now compare back to our longest statement, but don't worry, we're going to pick up every inconsistency there is. And we reuse the sequence. So we're going to exhaust statement one, our baseline statement. We're going to break the baseline statement into little tiny events. And what did she say about this and this and this? And after we have exhausted the first statement, then we take a second statement and we do a set of draft chapters of identical names and we fill them in. What did she say about having her first drink in statement two? And we do not bother <coughs> saying to ourselves, good or bad, important or not. We just keep track. Later on, we'll grade our paper, but first, don't ignore anything. Get it down on paper. And we draft chapters for every witness statement concerning each of the events. Now, I wrote about this in The Champion uh, in, uh, what month? March. So you can go read that there. Uh, or we'll find a way to get it to you. Compare the draft. Now, now we've taken every statement. We've broken it down into the identical events. Now you can pick up the chapter title. What ha and sometimes I number them. The numbers are going to disappear, but just as a convenience, I'll number them. So, you know, step 13. What she first remembers him saying. Uh, how he got her to walk down the street, whatever it is. And now I say, let me look at all my step 13 draft chapters. Let me read across and read every version of one thing. And you say, so you're going to find the inconsistencies? Yeah. But you know what else you're going to find? Consistencies. You may find three times she said something identically that you like. Well, it's better to know that. So what we're doing, who dropped her off at Alcoholics Anonymous, when she was meeting with Carol, how she met the defendant, why the complaining witness left with the defendant, who bought the vodka. You see what we're doing? And, and some people do this on a chart on their computer. Some people do it with draft chapters. That's up to you. I show it this way because this was how I used to do it. Before we were into all of the electronic manipulation, I'd just do cut and paste and put it on big sheets of butcher paper so I could read it. It's whatever system you're comfortable with, but what we're trying to do is say, okay, whether she had sex with the defendant in her first statement was, was on December 15th. Her second statement was December 16th. Then she had a third statement on December 16th, all about whether she even had sex with the defendant because she may have been blacked out. And whether she had sex, and here's what it looks like when you get it compiled. When asked, if the witness statement that she had sex was accurate, she says, I don't know. Then when we look at the December 16th, she said, I could feel it in my vagina. Then later she says she was not experiencing any pain, but I could tell that he did something. So you see, I'm very mechanical. It's easier to be bright and gifted in cross when you have good material, the rest is just tap dancing. 